2022 has come and gone, and now 2023 is here. And as always, many of us are looking for ways that we can freshen up this new year, learn new skills, learn new habits, and inspire ourselves to become better and do more. And to inspire those efforts, I have a list for you of 12 books, one book for each month of this new year so that you can read and learn about self-improvement, making money, trading, investing, economics, politics, and more. These are books, some of which I have read either recently or books that I have read many, many times. As you know, I read a lot and I have to read more and more increasingly lately because there's just so much garbage out there. One thing you'll notice when you first start reading high volume, the first couple of books you read are great. You think that every book out there is fantastic because you're just learning so much so quickly. But after a while, you realize that many books are just rehashing concepts that were distilled better by others. And the more volume you get through, the more you realize you have to work through a lot of hay in order to find that needle. So let's jump into 12 books that you can read this year, one for each month, starting off with a banger, Atomic Habits by James Clear. Atomic Habits is one of my favorite books for giving you the tools and the systems you need in order to make massive changes over longer periods of time. A key quote from this book is that you are what you repeat. The idea here is that your identity is not what you think you can do or what you think you will do someday. Your identity is what you actually do. And the results of repeated small actions compound over time, whether those actions are useless, detrimental, or beneficial. Beneficial. And so the idea here is that if you want to see massive change over a long period of time, the best way to do this is to start off very small with something you'll actually do so that you can create a habit of repeating it and incrementally improving it until you're at a place that is unrecognizable from where you started. This book and all the rest on this list are going to be linked in the description of this video. The second book on my list of top books to read during 2023 mm. is Fossil Future by Alex Epstein. This will likely be one of, if not the most controversial book on this list. But if you're not reading books that you disagree with, you are an ideologue in an echo chamber and you're not actually trying to improve yourself or the world. A key quote that summarizes this book is, we we don't want to save the planet from human beings. We want to improve the planet for human beings. The idea that is explained persuasively through the use of actual facts, real statistics, and science is that the use of fossil fuels is not only necessary, but it is extremely beneficial for both humanity and our planet. All right, the third book on this list, which I hope most of you have read already, is The Fiat Standard by Saifedean Amus. My favorite quote from this book is that Bitcoin effectively combines gold's saleability across time with fiat's saleability across space in one apolitical, immutable, open source package. The main point of this book is kind of to try and detail a history behind why fiat evolved when gold was such a good form of money because gold preserved your purchasing power across time. But over time, as technology increased and globalization increased, you needed a money that could be transported across space geographic locations very easily and low cost. That's where fiat came in when you had batch settlement of gold. But the problem with that was that fiat ultimately degraded and had the much more potential for abuse that led to the situation we are in today. Some of those negative situations that he details range everything from monetary policy and the global financial uh, ecosystem that we have to energy to even the food and medical industry that we have today. All negative results of the fiat standard. This is much less a book about Bitcoin, although obviously it's Safety and a Moose, who his first book, The Bitcoin Standard, so it's going to have a big lean that way. Even if you don't like Bitcoin, I highly recommend both of his books, but especially The Fiat Standard. All right, the fourth book on this list is The Law by Frederick Bastiat. Very short book, very easy to understand, and just 
punches home the points about what the law is for. Key quote from this book is, life, liberty, and property do not exist because men have made laws. On the contrary, it was the fact that life, liberty, and property existed beforehand that caused men to make laws in the first place. Essentially, the purpose of the law is supposed to be there as the collective enforcement of individual rights. And the only reason why today people care about who's in power and care about voting and care about laws is expressly because laws and voting are used to infringe on people's rights. The only thing the law could do is protect your rights. You wouldn't care who wielded it. But because the law is used to infringe on people's rights, we do care who wields those that power because we wanna make sure they don't infringe on our rights and even better, maybe they'll infringe on somebody else's, our enemies. All right, number five is The Almanac of Naval Ravikant. This is a book that I read every single year. It was originally inspired by a tweet thread from Naval and then uh, a podcast that was uh, spun off as a result of each one of those tweets so that he could go into detail and then a lot a lot of it was transcribed and collected into this book. Absolutely fascinating. He breaks down the ideas of wealth creation and seeking happiness and contentment and the strategies and tactics to use in order to do that, things to focus on, things not to focus on in a technological world versus how it used to be in the past. Lots of insights I highly recommend. Key quote from this book, you get rewarded by society for giving it what it wants and doesn't know how to get elsewhere. Intentions don't lead to results, only actions do. And so the more actions you take that create more of what society wants, the more society will give you what you want in return. All right, number six on the list for 2023 is by Ray Dalio, Principles for Dealing with the Changing World Order. This book now more than ever, I think is absolutely necessary for anyone to read who wants to understand the long-term time horizons of the rise and fall of empires. Key quote from this book, no system of government, no economic system, no currency, and no empire lasts forever, yet almost everyone is surprised and ruined when they fail. In this book, he looks at hundreds of years in the past and details the factors that make up the rise and the fall of empires and looks at what happens when one empire is rising while another one is falling and basically very persuasively points out all the details going on in today's day and age that show the same thing is happening again today. And if we can study how it happened in the past, it can give us tools to be able to navigate it happening today more successfully. Number seven is Enough Already by Scott Horton. Scott Horton's previous book was called Fool's Errand, and this was about ending the war in Afghanistan. And now last year he released this book, Enough Already, and I cannot recommend this book enough especially for Americans who believe that we have a patriotic duty to invade the rest of the world, to protect the world from themselves. This details the horrors of wars and shows how America's involvement in the Middle East has led to almost zero benefits and massive destruction for almost everyone involved. Key quote from this book, the policy of American dominance in the Middle East amounts to murder-suicide on a mass scale. The treasury is empty, the infantry is exhausted, the Bill of Rights is in tatters, and the American people do not believe in the war anymore. 20 years is enough already. It is time to cancel the failed war on terrorism. It is time to just come home. Whether you believe that we should be engaged in endless wars, or whether you don't and need some ammunition to be able to articulate why, I highly recommend this book. Number eight, what I learned losing a million dollars by Jim Paul. Most success books about investing or building a business or, or biographies even, they point to a lot of the things that a person did that caused their success. Very few books take the opposite approach and say, here's what I learned by my failures and here's what I learned by losing a ton of money. And I think those failures, those losses many times are much more powerful in terms of the lessons that they provide because sometimes success really can be just the result of blind luck. So you're not really sure whether that blind luck that worked for somebody else is signal for you, something that would work for you if you tried to repeat it. Key quote from this book, success can be built built upon repeated failures when the failures are not taken personally. Likewise, 
Failure can be built upon repeated successes when the successes are taken personally. One of the main ideas throughout this book is that when you do have success as much as possible, attribute it yourself to luck so that you are constantly trying to identify the things that will give you more success and stay away from failure. Because once you think you're invulnerable, then you are much more likely to stumble upon massive failure and undo some of that success. Book number nine is The Price of Tomorrow by Jeff Booth. There are very, very few books books out there that explain how deflation is number one, good, and number two, necessary for prosperity in the future, better than the price of tomorrow. Absolute masterclass of a book here. And he does it through the lens of technology and business rather than through the lens of economics like others try and do. He quote from this book, it took $185 trillion of debt to produce about $46 trillion of GDP growth over the last 20 years. He points out in this book how unsustainable this path that we are on, where you have to increase the price of everything through the increase of debt just in order to make numbers go up. This is contrary to the natural force of history. Deflation will win in the end. And the longer we try and delay that deflation, the worse it's gonna be when that dam finally breaks and all those deflationary forces finally flood through. Book number 10, How Innovation Works by Matt Ridley. Matt Ridley is a fantastic author, has tons of great books. This one is my favorite. Key quote that summarizes this book, innovation is the child of freedom and the parent of prosperity. He details story after story after story of showing how many times inventions or innovations are the result of tinkering and very small iteration over time that can only happen and thrive under complete freedom. And the more regulation you have over a system to try and cause one thing to happen or stop some things from happening, the more you squash innovation. And every time innovation gets squashed, the prosperity gets squashed as a result. All right, book number 11 is When Money Dies by Adam Ferguson. This book is a historical account of the fall of the Weimar Republic in Germany and the hyperinflation that occurred during that time. One of the things that I like about this book is how detailed it is in describing the daily things that happen for people there. And you really start to see, hey, that's something that looks like it's happening right now. That's something that looks like it's starting to take place right now. You start to see the seeds planted in this book, which happened well before Nazi Germany, about the hatred towards Jews and some of the things that got planted that eventually cascaded out of control that led to Nazi Germany happening. And so it details the fall of the mark, the hyperinflation. Key quote from this book, in hyperinflation, a kilo of potatoes was worth more than the family silver, a side of pork more than the grand piano. A prostitute in the family was better than an infant corpse. Theft was preferable to starvation. Warmth was finer than honor. Clothing more essential than democracy. Food more needed than freedom. Really detailing here that number one, when you destroy a nation's money, it flips morals on their head and it distorts the actions of everybody and the incentives that you have to do uh, good or moral deeds just based on survival instead, you are trying to do everything you can, flips kind of what you are supposed to do to get ahead in society. Number two, it details things that stay valuable when things start to collapse is the basic necessities. And that's why you see a lot of very wealthy people right now buying up the means of the production of real goods and services. Farmland is one of them. Real estate is another one. Things that are scarce so that you can control the means of production, the things that people continue to buy no matter what, even if things collapse. Those are the people that got wealthy during those collapses, like it, that this book uh, details in uh, When Money Dies, and will always happen over and over again every time money collapses. And then finally, book number 12, if you're still with me, is Market Wizards by Jack Schwager. I always highly recommend anything by Jack Schwager. He's one of the few that has in depth and in detail interviewed and studied basically every successful investor and trader there is. Market Wizards is his original book and it's really interesting to see some of the people that he interviewed in this original book in Market Wizards that went on afterwards to build massive investment funds, massive hedge funds, have huge success. So he's able to identify them early on and what you notice when you start reading a few of his books, some of the repeating themes. 
every single investor and trader who is successful over long periods of time basically all has the one same number one rule, which is risk, manage your risk or don't lose money. Every single one of them across the board. Preventing yourself from massive losses from huge drawdowns is rule number one by far. Key quote from this book, it's not about being right, it's about making money. Many people, when they first start out investing or first start out trading, what they focus on is being right, trying to pick the next winner and be right so they can say, hey, I knew Tesla was gonna go up or hey, I knew it was gonna go down, so I pegged the top. But ultimately what matters is being right. So if you are right about something, what you really have to ask yourself is, was I profitable? Was I confident enough about my call that I put money on the line? And then did it actually make me money? Because it doesn't matter if you were right in the long term about something like, hey, I think, you know, uh, Amazon's gonna go up. It's like, well, how much money did you make on it? Did you have to sell? You got stopped out before it actually went up? It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters in investing and trading is profits not being right. Helps you keep your ego in check and focus on the only thing that matters. And as a bonus for any of you that have already read some or most of these books or that read a lot more than one book a month like myself, I will link my bookshelf link in the description below this list of books as well. That way you can follow along with me every single time I complete a book. I throw it up on that list with a rating of whether I think it was good, great, or garbage and a link so you can get it on Amazon as well. As always, really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.